Welcome to the Bread of Light broadcast. We pray that today's teaching blesses you, encourages you, inspires you, and motivates you to truly live a life worthy of the King of Kings and Lord of Lords that we serve. Be blessed by today's teaching. God bless. The series, we want to take a, a quick look back, as crazy as it sounds, by looking forward. And in the process of doing so, we want to kind of do it uh, from the standpoint of um, playing a game just for a few minutes. Um, not very long, but just for a few minutes, because my, my hope and my prayer is that uh, as we uh, move into the season that's coming, from the season that we're leaving, that we can create a link. And that's what the study on tonight is about as we close out one season, which is a season of Thanksgiving, and move into the next season, which is the Advent season or the season of appearing. And the ultimate goal for worship is to usher in the presence of God by letting God know that he's worth everything to us. Because with every action, there's an equal and an opposite reaction. And I've, I've so enjoyed all the dialogue about Thanksgiving during this series. And we've learned through it all, not only by study, not only by the messages, but by living as we all gather tonight that in everything, we truly can and should give God thanks. So uh, as we prepare to... to to go into the next season. We want to do so with the right mindset and we want to do so with the right affect. And, you know, in my job um, at the uh, behavioral health uh, facility, we talk a lot about affect and what affect is, uh, A-F-F-E-C-T is, is the, is the appearance, is what, um, what you see on the person that you're talking to and that you're working with. And it's critical to understand the affect that you're giving off because you could be giving off an affect to saying one thing when your mouth is saying another. And if that happens, which one do you think people are going to pay attention to more? What you're saying or what they're seeing? Anybody? What they're saying. Exactly. Why, why do you think they'll pay attention to what they're seeing more so than what you're saying? Because words is just words is words are just words. They want to see action behind it. So exactly, one hundred percent correct. That's right. You know, action. And Jesus made it crystal clear what an Advent viewpoint of Thanksgiving looks like, or what Thanksgiving that brings about an appearance by God looks like. And John 8 and 12 says that when Jesus spoke again to the people, which implies he said this to them before, he said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. And that's significant because not only is it saying in the natural, whosoever follows me, meaning Jesus, whosoever actually follows Jesus will never walk in darkness because Jesus is illuminating our path. We be, even more so, we become uh, and, and a source of light through our reflection to make a difference in the lives of other people. So as we allow our affect to begin to mirror that of Jesus, what through our thanksgiving and through our worship, we then can begin to illuminate the path for other people so that they can realize, too, in the midst of everything they got going on, that there is a higher and better way to function. There is a higher and better way to live. And that higher and better way of functioning and living can make a difference, a positive difference in other people's lives. Because that's ultimately what God is calling us to do. He's calling us to live a life of worship so that our lives will usher in the presence of God through allowing everything to be set so that he can appear and make a difference in the life of somebody else. Make sense? So 
With that in mind, we started this series playing Family Feud, a uh, special edition of Family Feud. We're going to close this series playing the Thanksgiving edition of Deal and No Deal. Now, as with Family Feud, with, with Deal and No Deal, we modified the rules. But the same premise stands. So what I want everybody to do right now, and I don't, I don't want you to tell me, but what I want everybody to do right now is I just want you to pick a case. Just, just in your mind, pick a case. You don't have to tell me which one it is. Um, but just pick one. You know, left side, middle side, right side. Feel free to pick one. Any, any, everybody pick one. Has everybody got a case in mind? Yep. Okay, everybody got a case in mind. Great, great. Davina, you and Corey got a case in mind? Yeah. Okay, y'all each got to pick y'all own case. Y'all each got y'all own case? Yeah. Okay, all right, good. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So, so since you've chosen your case, let's begin. We all know how deal or no deal works. Deal or no deal works from the standpoint of, you know, you're given a choice, you get to pick a case, you're given a choice. After you look, go through the series of cases you picked, the question is asked, deal or no deal. We're going to do it here a little bit differently tonight. There are three basic things that we learned in this series on Thanksgiving. And these three things all play a direct role in setting the tone for Christ to appear, not only in our lives, but in the lives of other people. We're going to look at each one of them, and then I'm going to ask a question. And, you know, feel free to answer. First thing is that we have to do, and we talked about it, and, and First Lady so eloquently expressed it, we have to embrace the greatness of being grateful. Who here remembers what, what grateful is, the definition that First Lady gave of, of, of what gratefulness is? Any, anybody, what is gratefulness? Anybody want to give it a shot? What gratefulness is? What What is gratefulness to you? Let's Grateful. do it. First. Gratefulness is um, an act of being thankful, but with uh, action behind it, showing showing that you are with um, with action. It's basically action word instead of just words. Very true. That, that's absolutely correct. Gr gratefulness is action. You know, think about the song, the praise song. Give thanks with what a grateful heart. You know, uh, it's it, it's action. What's so great about taking that action? Because it says here, embrace the greatness of being grateful. Wherein does the greatness lie, in your opinion, in having a grateful heart and being grateful? What 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 makes that such a great thing? Anybody give you a hint? Think about the thing. Can I repeat the question? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what makes what makes being grateful so great in the in not only your life but potentially in the lives of other people? And the hint I'll give you is think about a building, particularly a skyscraper like the Sears Tower or the. Uh, U.S. Bank building uh, in Milwaukee. I think those are like the two tallest buildings in the respective cities. Before the before the building can go up and gain height, what has to be laid first? Foundation. Exactly. Exactly. The foundation has to be laid. Okay. And the higher a building goes, the deeper the foundation has to go. Because the foundation has to be able to support the weight of everything that comes, not only in making that building, but comes with that building. Let me explain. When engineers design buildings, when, in, when engineers design the Sears Tower, when they design the U.S. Bank building, when they design the houses that we live in, they not only had to lay the foundation to cover the weight and the volume and everything of the wood and drywall that stands on top of it. But they had to take into account the additional weight of the people that are going to be living in the house, the furniture that's going to be put in the house, the vehicles that are going to be put in the cars, the cars, rather, the vehicles and the cars that are going to be put 
in the garage, if it's a house that has an attached garage. And even if it's not, you know, the weight of everything that goes in that detached garage, it's so much more. An engineer takes the time to count the cost of everything that's associated with that building functioning. Each and every one of us are temples of the Holy Spirit. And God took great care, which is why we're fearfully and wonderfully made uh, to build us the way that he built us. So when we take the time and the opportunity to give God thanks, and when we, just as First Lady said, take the time to really embrace you know, and say, God, I want to do more than just give you lip service. I really want to give you real service. I want to, I want to get out and make a difference. I, I, I want to get out and serve your people. I want to get out and let people see you shining in me. That means that we're counting the cost and embracing the fact that not only do we have to remember that that glory that's in us, that reflection of God that's in us, has to be able to support the weight of the attention that comes with it. But it's got to be able to support the praise as well as the criticism that comes with it. It's got to be able to support the good times and the bad times. It's got to be able to support every aspect of being great in God because God desires that none should perish, the word says, the desires uh, that, that none should perish and that all should have everlasting life. So if that's the case, he wants us at every turn to embrace the whole tenet of being grateful, to embrace it and to let people know no matter what it is you're going through, even if you got the smallest thing, if you're able to, to express that you're not happy, guess what? You have a reason to give God thanks. And when you take that measure of initiative to walk that far out of your comfort zone and that far potentially into hostile territory, depending on what the people that you come in contact with are going through and how they receive you, you realize when you see the reward of what happens, just how awesome God is. And you realize that God, you actually took the time to use me to make a difference in the life of somebody, not even for my benefit, but for their benefit, but more importantly, for your glory. That's a reason to say, God, I'm grateful. I want to do even more for you. And I'm counting the cost and I'm realizing that I can do this. I can really do this. And we may not think we can do it, but we really can. Because it's not us in and of ourselves that we're doing it. We're doing it understanding that the grateful heart that we have is laying the spiritual foundation to do what it is that God has called us to do. Can somebody read Hebrews 12 and 28 if, if it's big enough? If not, I can read it. Okay, I can read it. I got it. I got okay. it. Okay. Therefore, since we receive a kingdom which cannot be shaken, let us show gratitude and offer to God pleasing service and acceptable worship with reverence and awe. Amen. Amen. With reverence and awe. What 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 do those two words mean to you, anybody? Oh, reverence and awe, like 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 no, I can't think of no word. Respect. Mm -hmm. A regard for a sort of regard. Yep. Yeah, respect and regard. Um, respect and regard, like to the to the nth degree. It's like, you know, when something leaves you in awe, it just leaves you like standing there, like with your mouth open, like, wow, I cannot believe that in this instance, I cannot believe God that you love me so much that you actually gave me access to all of this, to all of this grace, to all of this mercy, to all of this power. To all of this love, I didn't do nothing to earn it. In fact, if, if if it was solely based on what I did, I did everything I could, knowingly and unknowingly, to, to get you to take it away from me. But you show it to me still. It, it leaves you just, sometimes leaves you just sitting with your mouth just like hanging open like, wow, I cannot believe, God, that you just did that. I can't believe that you just blessed me like that. 
I think we've all been in a point where we've just been in awe of God and, and, and his mercy and his grace. Reverence is, you know, reverence, reverence goes with it, with, with all, with that, wow, comes a realization, okay, people need to respect this. What, what, what do the young people say today? Uh, what is that, what, what's, what's the saying right now? Put some respect on my name. Is that it? Something like that. You know, reverence and awe. God, you're so awesome that I'm going to make sure that everything I do, I put respect on your name. Because as I put respect on your name and make your name um, the magnitude that it really is, or even do my best to try to make your name as big as it really is, as large as it really is, as, as mighty as it really is in my life. I, I, because you've done so much for me, I want to do even more. I want to try to do the same thing in somebody else's life. And as we see God begin to move, you know, we give God praise even the more. And as we realize that, that God is just that awesome, and God is worth just that much to be revered and to be praised and to be worshipped. You know, that's the foundation. That's the kingdom foundation that God desires to lay in the earth. Because once the kingdom foundation is laid, just like the natural foundation in a building, that's when levels can go up. That's when stories can go up. That's when, when the foundation is laid for worship and the foundation is laid for prayer and the foundation is laid for fellowship and the foundation is laid for ministry and it's understood and accepted by everybody that this is the way it's going to be. When people come in, they don't understand that this is the way it's going to be and they come in being disrespectful. You be uh-uh, no, 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 my brother, no, my sister, no, no, no. You're going to put respect on my God's name. Because do you not know that had it not been for him exhaling, you wouldn't have had the capacity to inhale. Had it not been for him willing it so, your eyes would not have opened. Your heart wouldn't still be beating. Your loved ones wouldn't still be here. You wouldn't have where you live and what you drive and where you work. He takes it and uses us to help people see the foundational things. And, and and for me, the thing I took away from that lesson that that, that first lady presented is just st strip it all back to just the basic things. Strip it all back to just the basic stuff. And when you realize just how awesome God is and, and how without the basic stuff, we wouldn't be able to have all the other things. You know, and, and when we look at the fact that because God is allowing us to receive a kingdom that can't be shaken because the foundation has been laid so firmly, been laid so perfectly. It's been sealed with God's love and, and been purchased by the blood of Christ. How can we not embrace that kind of greatness? How can we not embrace that measure of architecture? He created us from dust. He created each of us unique. Even identical twins are unique. That means there's never been anybody like you that's walking that, that's ever walked the earth. There's never going to be anybody like you that's going to walk the earth after God calls you home. If that's not a reason to give God reverence and awe, I don't know what is. Does anybody have anything that they like to add or anything they like to share? Any thoughts on this at all? I just like to share this. I, I do think sometimes as Christians we can get in the routine of things and just doing things. Yeah. Even when it comes to our prayer life and reading our word, I, I was um, reading this book. It's called Crazy Love. Mm -hmm. And the first chapter of the book says, stop praying. And the chapter is basically about stop what you're doing. Um, be in awe of God's goodness and his creation and everything that he's done. And think about all the things God is before you start praying. So that you can really um, understand or appreciate the mm. God that we serve. And I think that sometimes we don't take that time out to do it. We just do things out of, like I said, out of just routine. And sometimes we just have to stop yeah. and just really just take it all in and understand, you know, like, like I said, 
um, understanding who God is and what he's done. And like you said, being all of him and reverence him before we can go on and really appreciate and do the things that God wants us to do. Mm -hmm. I, I received that. I, I, I received that as you talked. I'm like, yep, guilty as charged. I'm guilty of doing that. You know, it, it's so easy to let. Um, it, it's so easy if we're not careful to make prayer just something that you check off on your to-do list. That's I like that. I like that a lot. I definitely like that a lot. That's so true. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that. Thank you for sharing that. Anyone else? Okay. So the question I'm going to ask here is this. This is th this option of, of, of giving thanks is, is being offered now. Remember, each of you got cases. So I'm going to ask you. Deal or no deal? Anybody want to stop here with just this? Or, anybody, or, or you want to keep going and see what else is out there? Keep going. Okay. All right. Second takeaway. Remember that giving thanks is a choice and an act of worship. And that really is taking the whole premise of gratefulness to the next level. Uh, that's something that was really, that, that really spoke volumes across um, the first three lessons. And I know for me, just in life, that's what really has shined like a beacon in, in, in this season right now, you know, and what made for me and all I can do is speak for me. What made me really see it is, is, is coming to, rem is coming to the revelation that um, giving thanks is an act of worship and worship is, is based like love in decision. It's a choice, you know, and it's a choice not rooted in your emotions and how you feel. And it's a choice that's not rooted in the atmosphere and what's going on around you. And it really brought to mind for me as, you know, First Lady shared uh, on gratefulness and it ushered me into looking at thanksgiving in a whole different way the premise of it it really brought to mind for me uh the difference between uh happiness and contentment and we've talked about this before uh, in bible study and 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 it, i think that you know like prayer we fall in the routine of allowing circumstances to dictate the volume of thanksgiving we offer to God. And that's not how it's supposed to work because that's basically how happiness works. Is is happiness is rooted in what's happening. It's based on what happens. If everything is going great in your life and, and everything is wonderful and all the reports are are A-OK -okay and all lights are green, it's easy to be happy. But when, when things start not being all green lights and situations happen that may not be the best of situations or you receive a report that maybe you didn't want to receive or you're, you're put in a position where you have to do or do things that you may not want to do, you know, that happiness all of a sudden changes, you know, and it's a dangerous thing because when we allow ourselves to function based on the happiness and how we feel, we're allowing our emotions to take control. And emotions are very subjective because emotions um, are based on what's going on around you and your emotions can change your affect quickly. You have, have has anyone here ever started out having a good day and they might they might be have they might be having a good day and they feel one way and something happens by somebody makes them mad or somebody or a situation or circumstance happens and it it makes them sad and and their whole mood changed and unbeknownst to you with your whole mood change and your whole affect changed which means you know you went from being somebody that drew, was drawn good energy and good people to them and you went from a source of good energy and, and light to a source of negative energy and, and, and putting a damper on things or worse yet, darkness on things and driving people away. That's what happens when, you know, we allow ourselves to fall into the trap. And it's a trap of the enemy of basing our 
emotional state, spiritual state on our emotions and what's happening. God desires us to remember that giving thanks is a choice. Like love is a choice. Love is more than just butterflies because every day is not going to be sunny. Love is more than uh, feelings. Love is, love is more than just physical gratification because it's something that deals with it that, that has to function in every room. And it's a choice that you make. I'm going to give it my all to be the very best version of myself for you because I want you to have the very best of everything, even if it means the very worst for me. And Jesus played that out. Jesus was a living witness of what love is. He had no reason to go through what he went through other than for us. So like love, giving thanks has to be a choice. It don't matter what the doctor said. I'm going to give you thanks, God. It don't matter what my, what my bank account says. I'm going to give you thanks, God. It don't matter what the mechanic said. It don't matter what the plumber said. It don't matter what somebody hurt my feelings said. It don't matter what my boss that made me mad said. I'm still going to give you thanks, God, because I'm not going to function in happiness. I'm going to function in what your word says. I'm going to function in contentment because the word lets us know that I've learned, and I'm paraphrasing, I've learned how to have a lot. I've learned how to have a little. I've learned to be at all points in between. I've learned, Paul said, in whatever state that I'm in here with or right now, whatever state I'm in, I've learned to be content because the contentment does not come in what state I'm in naturally. The contentment comes from the state of my relationship with my God, the state of my understanding just how awesome he is and the state of my making the decision to give and keep God first place in my life. If someone could, could they read Colossians 3, 3 and 16? If Again, if, if you can see it. If not, I, I'll read it. Let the spoken word of Christ have its home within you, dwelling in your heart and mind, permeating every aspect of your being as you each spiritual things, teach spiritual things and admonish and train one another with all wisdom, singing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs with thanks, thankfulness in your hearts of God, Colossians 3 and 16. Amen. Amen. What do you think the key word is in this whole verse? Anybody? Thankfulness. Mm -mm, nope. That's an important one. Think about what we're talking about. Admonish. Uh uh. It's a choice and an act. It's a choice and an act. It's a choice. So in order for a choice to be made, once the choice is made, we have to position ourselves to allow the stuff that comes with that choice to happen. The key word in this verse is let. Because nothing else will happen in our lives if we don't let it. Once we make a choice, after a choice is made, we have to decide if we want everything that comes with that choice. And most people make the assumption, me included, that choices are either you got a good thing and a bad thing. You got a good choice or a bad choice. Sometimes the choices that you're faced with because of the, the situation that you're in, which is why what Paul said is so profound and so true. Sometimes it's you got a bad choice and a worse choice. Sometimes you got a choice that's going to be a small challenge and a choice is going to be a bigger challenge. Sometimes you got uh, a choice that's going to be mean uh, a lot of loss and a choice that's going to mean a whole lot of loss. But because of the position that you're in, you have to make a choice. And it's easy to make a choice when what comes with it is good. 
No problem. We're going to let that happen. If you got to make a choice where what's going to come with it is discomfort or heartache or pain or challenge or trial, you got to make up your mind that, you know what? It's a bad choice and the worst choice. I'm going to make this choice. And I'm just going to I'm just going to let let what happens happen because I'm content in the realization, just like First Lady, you said, Sister Fiend, that you said, in the realization that I'm going to do this thing with a thankful heart. I'm going to admonish and train other people. Remember, admonish means to come alongside. So while I keep my thankful heart or while I make the choice to embrace the greatness that comes with being grateful, I'm going to come alongside other people. And I'm going to train them and show them how to go through this. I'm going to train them and show them how to do it in real time. And I want them to see the ups, the downs, the good, the bad. I want them to see it all because I want them to see it all because I don't want them to get caught up in the emotions that is human nature to grab when you see somebody going through some stuff, especially if it's somebody you care about. You know, you see them in pain. You see them in despair. You see them shedding tears. Well, I love them, so I'm going to shed tears with you. And it's okay to do that because you feel for them. But in the midst of it, you got to remember, it's not based on what's happening. Our affect still has to be one that we are children of light and we are reflections of and carriers of that light to generations that are behind us and people in our own generation that are walking outside of that light. And because of that, we have to remember that even though these feelings are very real, we can still take comfort and have peace in knowing that as long as we're content in who God is and as long as we're content with what God is doing in our lives and the fact that he is God and that he leaves us with our mouths hanging open sometimes saying and, and saying, God, I can't believe that you did that. I can't believe that you took me in the face of this mess and created a message in it. I can't believe that you took this trial and gave me the opportunity in you to triumph. I can't believe that you took this miss, and in the process of taking this miss, well, I blew it. You revealed my mission, and that mission is making a difference in the lives of other people. So I'm going to make the choice, God, to, 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 to give you thanks no matter what. I'm going to give you thanks in everything because that's your will anyway. We're created to worship you because giving you thanks is reminding is, is, is helping to remind ourselves of just who you are. We don't have to remind you, God. We're giving you thanks because we're realizing, hey, you're awesome, even in the midst of our bad stuff. You're awesome, even in the midst of having to deal with a bad choice and a worse choice. It, whether it's a bad choice or a worse choice, it don't matter, God, which choice I make, because I know that the choice that you lead me to make, no matter how bad it looks for me, is still the right choice because you led me to the choice and you're good. So even if I'm going through some challenging stuff right now, God, you're still good. Because you're laying a foundation in me to take me to new levels in you. And in the process of you taking me to new levels in you, as you use me to reach other people, that their eyes might be open and understand and enlightened, you're going to begin to take them to new levels in you. So my praise is for the new levels that you're taking them to. Even if I don't feel like it right now, if I'm and if, if I'm aching and in pain right now, if, if I can't put one foot in front of the other right now, if I'm in despair and so lost in the storm and, and my natural man that I can't see you moving, I'm still going to make the choice to give you thanks because that's training somebody else on how to do the same thing. And whether it's through prayer or whether it's like First Lady said, just, just taking a minute before you pray and stopping and just letting... God blow your mind and, and knock your mouth open before you even say a single word. It might be a song he puts on your heart. It might be a hymn that you remember from way back. I was driving today while I was working and the enemy's trying to have me feel some type of way. And um, I just so happened that, that as I was listening to the gospel station, you know, all the contemporary music was playing, but a, a, a hymn fell on there. You know, a, part, a, a hymn that Carlton Pearson was singing and one of the camp meetings fell on there. And, um, you know, it, it ministered to my heart. 
it, it encouraged me and it, and it helped put me, pull me back into the place of being content. And that's what God desires us to dwell. Because as we stay in that place of being content, everything that's here can take place. Everything in this verse can happen. Because when we find ourselves in that place of contentment, we're willing to let all the stuff happen. We're willing to let that spoken word have its home in us. Because remember, a good home, a good architect builds a home already counting the cost, not only of the weight of the materials, but the weight of everything that's going to dwell in it. So if it's saying that the spoken word of Christ desires to have its home within you, that means you got to make a choice. Am I going to go by my natural man and look at, well, God, my mind is already full of stuff. I'm worrying about this. I'm concerned about that. I'm thinking about this. I'm stressing about that. Or am I going to say, God, you made me in your image and your likeness. So if this is what you desire me to have, you've counted the cost of what can dwell in this temple. The stuff that you don't want in here and that don't belong in here, you move it out. And you move in this stuff because if this is what you want in here, Lord, I thank you for it. What that does is that ministers to people that are going through. We may not even know. We may not even see them. But they see us. And more importantly, God sees them. And his mind is his mindset is always on the end game. Anybody have any comments or thoughts that they'd like to share here? Everybody still with me? Everybody with me so far? Yep. Still here. Okay. So, again, I asked the question. Now, you got these two things here. Deal or no deal? We want to keep going or you want to, want to you, you good right here? Hearing nothing? Let's keep going. We got one more stop to make. And this was a takeaway that, that has us where we are right now. We're crossing over into the Advent season, the season of appearing, which on a you know, Christian calendar, the liturgical calendar, this is the season that's set aside to celebrate uh, the events leading up to the birth of Jesus Christ and his appearing here on the earth. And with that in mind, the Lord really began to deal with me a lot about it with the message uh, that was preached this past Sunday um, that culminated there, but he began to deal with me practically a lot about it because he helped me understand that the faith in giving God thanks in everything, good times and bad, making those bad and worse choices, not for the sake of the bad and worse choice, it's designed to exercise and it's designed to set a tone because as I said before, everything with God is focused on the end game. And what God desires is to usher in an atmosphere that's conducive for him to appear in. And it's not even so much for him to appear in for us. It's for, it's, it's for him to appear in the lives of other people because God desires to use us as vessels in the earth to be the ambassadors for Christ that he created us to be. Ambassadors are masters at speaking both the language of the land from which they came and the language of the land in which they dwell. So because we have a relationship with Jesus Christ and we're his children, because the word says, if any man be in Christ, he's what? A new creature. We know how to speak that language, but God has us here for the season that he has us here to speak the things of God in a language that the people here can understand. So understanding and knowing that thanksgiving offered in faith, that sets the atmosphere for God's appearance in the earth. Not everybody's going to find a reason to give thanks. I was actually uh, talking with someone about uh, someone that they know and the challenge that they have in this season and how when this season comes, they struggle. And clinically, they, there's a disease. It's a sad disease. It's a, it, it's a seasonal you know, thing. It's a seasonal disorder. Because it's almost like the, the, the brain is just chemically set to become sad in this time of, of giving, this time of happiness. And as, as I thought about that, the Lord helped me see and understand that this is not a time to be sad. But, it, but the key in being in that mindset is understanding where you are, 
understanding where your affect is, but more importantly, understanding what the source of your affect is. If you understand that, that God is good all the time, if you understand that even in things that we don't understand and that are painful, God is still always working everything for our good, even in challenging times, we find cause to give God thanks. And as we do it in faith, God, I don't understand. All I understand and know is that you're good and you're worth everything to me. So if anybody asks me right now why I'm lifting up holy hands and they want an explanation, the only explanation I could give is because you're worth everything to me. Because if they ask me the logic behind it, I couldn't give it to them because I don't know. And that's by design. God does not want us to function in logic. He does not want us to function in logos. He wants us to be in a state where he can get his rhema word to us when necessary to make a difference in our lives and to use us to make a difference in somebody else's life so that he can then appear on the scene and people can see and know that it's not our intellect, it's not our logic, it's not what we know, it's not our connections, it's not the people that we know or how much money we got or what we drive, it's none of that stuff. Is God doing it? Is God appearing on the scene and bringing a new light on the situation and putting a new light on the circumstances. So the people, as it says in the word about it, the people that were once in darkness now see a marvelous light. They now see the marvelous light of Jesus Christ. That's what God desires to do. And this is what we have to ever be mindful of, especially when we are faced with making choices in, a, in dark places where once we get past the choice, we don't see daylight for a while. We got to know that even though we may not see daylight for a while, daylight is on the other side. And we will make it to the other side. I'll read this last verse, uh, Jeremiah verses, Jeremiah 33 verses 14 through 16. It says, behold, the days are coming, says the Lord, when I will fulfill the good word and promise which I have made regarding the house of Israel and the house of Judah. In those days and at that time, I will cause a righteous branch of David to spring forth, and he, the Messiah, shall execute justice and righteousness on the earth. In those days, Judah will be saved, and the people of Jerusalem will live in safety. And this is the name by which she will be called, the, the Lord, our righteousness or justice. It's significant to understand what this verse is saying. And it's even more significant to understand what that means for us, because when we do, we'll even know even the more, especially when it's so dark that we can't see our hand in front of our face in the midst of the circumstances that we're in, that making the choice to give God thanks in faith is setting the atmosphere for such a brilliant shine to come into your life, for such a brilliant shine that God is going to put on us because we were faithful in the midst of the turmoil. Because it says that the days are coming, says the Lord, when I'll fulfill the good word and promise which I've made regarding the house of Israel. God does not make a promise that he don't keep. We can bank on his word. So if we're faced with those, those, those decisions, it might not be favorable. And we're faced with situations that just aren't good based on what we see and based on the happiness scale. We can still rejoice because we know that God will fulfill the good word and promise, which he's made regarding the house of Israel. We're a part of the house of Israel because we've said yes to Jesus Christ. And we're a part of the house of Judah. And that's so significant because when it goes on further, it says, in those days, Judah will be saved and the people of Jerusalem will live in safety. Judah literally means, is, is it literally means praise. So praise is going to be saved in those days. What days? The days when God fulfills the good word and promise that he made to us. Our praise is going to be saved. Our praise is going to be saved. And the people that chose to dwell in the house of peace, because that's what Jerusalem means, the house of peace. Where's the house of peace? The house of peace is found in the presence of God, found in the holy place, is found with God. So when we make our spirit man up and our mind up, to in faith say, God, I'm going to give you thanks. I'm giving you thanks now. Somebody put it when I was growing up. I'm giving you thanks on credit. 
I'm giving you thanks on credit because I don't see it right here, right now, God, but because I know that you're good for your word and I know that you're good and I'm going to keep your word. I'm giving you thanks on credit because I know as long as I give you thanks on credit, the praise that I'm putting out, it's not going to lose its value. The peace that I have because I'm in the house of peace is not going to be ultimately disrupted. It might be challenged, but it won't be disrupted. And it's designed to be challenged and help us develop the discipline to continue to give you thanks. Because as we continue to give you thanks in the midst of our challenges, not only is it helping us grow to another level, but it's help, helping to draw men and women unto you, God, so that you then can begin to take them to higher levels. And as that happens, more souls are there and more mouths are there and more hands and feet are there to go out and share the good news to win souls for the kingdom. Because again, God desires that none should perish, but that all should have everlasting life. Some are going to perish because they're going to make the, the choice to reject God. But those of us that have said yes to him, we're the catalyst that brings about the change. We're the spark that lights the atmosphere because of our thanksgiving and our willingness to live for God and to allow Jesus to be the Christ, to be the Messiah, to be our Savior, and to sit on the throne of our hearts. Because as we do that, he then becomes our justice. He becomes our righteousness. He truly becomes all those things. So when people look at us, they don't see they don't, they don't see the stuff. They may know the stuff and they're going to remember the stuff and they're going to be like, yeah, I, I remember when you did this. I remember when you did that, but there's something different about you. I, I can't put my finger on it, but I, I, I can't even call you what I used to call you because even though it's you and because I'm looking at you, it's not you anymore. That's the opportunity. Those are the opportunities that God desires to open up through our living. And when we put ourselves in a position to give God thanks in everything and to give God thanks on credit, offer it to him in faith, especially when we're going through tough times, that's where the gratefulness, the grateful dynamic comes in. When people see your suffering and know your suffering, yet see you praising God and know that it's sincere and earnest, people appreciate that and when they see that you're willing to serve and minister to other people in the midst of the trials and tests that you're facing and they receive some of that service don't think for a second that they're not grateful for that yes they're grateful to you but i've been also them that's graciousness and gratefulness that they're showing to god and as god begins to work in them and move in them and he brings the revelation to them as he's brought it to us how much more will they want to go out and do even more for God. Anybody have any thoughts or anything they'd like to add or comment on or share about this point? Okay. That being said, I'm going to ask one more time. You got this stop here. Anybody, deal or no deal? Fair enough. We talked about these cases and everybody made a great deal by holding on to your case. Because the blessing in your decision is, whichever, no matter which case you chose to begin, as long as it's filled with thanksgiving, guess what? You win. So as long as you're willing to embrace the, the gratefulness that's in your heart and take that gratefulness and, and use that gratefulness as a source to make a difference in other people's lives and to lay a strong spiritual foundation. If that's where you are on that day, God's going to bless you. If on another day, he, he takes you and puts you in a position where you might be going through some things, but instead of allowing it to shake you from being happy, you make your mind up and, and choose to be content no matter what state you're in, guess what? You win. If you realize on, an, on on another day that that it's about faith, it's not even about the contentment versus happiness. This is just a faith walk right now. And God, I'm praising you on credit because I ain't even got it in me to even get to the point of getting the contentment. I'm just praising you on credit because I know that your word will not come back void. Guess what? You win too. 
as long as we allow Thanksgiving to be the fuel to get us to the point of making the atmosphere right for God to come in, you know, that's where the advent or appearing of God, you know, is a reflection of the power of the Thanksgiving that we that we give to God. Uh, that's where it comes into play. It's a reflection of that power. It's a reflection of the magnitude of that power. If we can call the God of all creation. We can, uh, at the lack of a better term, summon his presence, not like a genie, not like a servant, but summon his presence by getting his attention because we're letting him know, God, we get it. We understand. Just think about the magnitude of that. That, just like First Lady said, that stops you. That stops you right in your tracks. Whatever praise or whatever worship you were given, that stops you and realize, wait a minute. God actually is in the room. He's actually here. You ever call somebody that you thought you could never, you ever call somebody or write somebody um, that you thought you'd never be able to get in touch with and they actually respond? That stops you like dead in your tracks. They actually responded. They're actually on the phone. They actually sent me an email or sent me a letter or they sent me a text. They actually responded. That gives you a whole new level of respect for them. But before that respect comes, that just leaves you in a state of awe. That's what God desires to do every single day in our lives. And he will if we let him. So my hope and my prayer is that we do just that. We let him. Because as we let him, we're opening the door for him to come in and make an appearance in our lives so that he can move through our lives to make a difference in other people's lives. Amen. 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 church on the move dedicated to sharing the good news of jesus christ through the preached and taught word community activism and outreach and practical ministry designed to meet needs bless hearts save souls and change lives you can sow into the ministry via our cash app at dollar sign lw ministries 2020 that's dollar sign lw ministries 2020 Sow your seed into the good works and good ground of Living Witness Ministries today. And thank you for helping us reach the world with the life giving way. We pray that you were blessed by today's broadcast and would love to hear from you. If you have any prayer requests, praise reports, or would like to learn more about Living Witness Ministries, you can contact us by email at living to witness at gmail.com. That's the word living, the number two witness at gmail.com or by phone at area code 404-955-8846. Again, that's area code 404-955-8846. Until next time, we encourage you to continue to live your life as a living witness. Oh, 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 oh,